Happy Monday, you guys. Let's kickstart off the week today with a nice little chipper. Just a one round, top to bottom, take her down and finish her off. It's a good time. It's going to be a challenging work set, but we're going to have some fun with it today. Uh, to get us there, what we have for you guys, plank for three seconds, sit down dog for three to five reps, in for a plank, knee to nose for 10 to 20 alternating reps, three more glides and knee push up for three to five, tempo push up for five at a 303 tempo, uh, side lunge for 30 seconds, and the side lunges I want you to keep in mind. It's just a chance to move the lower body around after kind of just, and sorry, letting the upper body recover a bit. So take these at a pace that's just nice and smooth and steady, nice and slow, at a nice recovery pace, waking up the legs, recovering the upper. Before we go back to the top again and take down that upper body again. So take your time with that, warm up slow, and just be really gentle with those side lunges. After that, we're gonna move into some dumbbell work that's gonna get you more primed up for the workout. Kettlebell or dumbbell swing for five to seven reps. Dumbbell pause dip for three at a three second. Uh, hold the bottom into three push press. And then you're gonna flip to the other side and take it down with that pause dip and then three push press on the opposite side. After that, you're gonna work through the little sequence that we have in the work set today, which is a lunge, lunge, squat combination. So one repetition is equal to one lunge, one lunge, and a squat. And we'll go through that uh, as we get there. But just gonna practice that once for skill purposes to get a flow down for you guys, not to overkill it, but just to get a flow down. And then you do that for three rounds just to give you a chance to feel the workout movements. Our workout today consists of uh, 30 kettlebell swings. Straight up, 30 swings. Get them done, rock them hard. Burpee for 30, yes, can't go wrong with that. All right, hit it down. Then you move into that combo. So you do 16 repetitions of one lunge, one lunge, one air squat. One lunge, one lunge, one air squat. And just getting into a good flow and you do 16 of those. From there, we have a V up for 30 reps, taking it down nice and steady. I'll show you some different variations for the V up for you guys to play with. And then you're gonna finish off with dumbbell push press, 30 reps per side. So you're gonna lock on 30 reps on one side, 30 on the other side. So it's gonna get a little taxing, a little gassing, but at least you'll be done right after those push press. All right, so let's warm you guys up, go through some skills, get you guys ready to go. All right, guys, let's warm up. Let's get those feet under the hips. We'll take the arms big and tall up overhead. We'll stretch over to one side. We'll come back and up and over, stretch to the other side. Then we'll come back up and forth, fold. We're gonna touch those toes. We're gonna walk up those shins, nice flat back. We're gonna come down, bring the foot, and we're gonna step it back into our lizard. And in that, we're gonna plant our hand in that front foot. We're gonna turn the torso, and we'll come back to center. Turn the torso, back to center, and turn, and back to center. We're gonna lower the back knee, we're gonna press the hip gently. Come back through, press the hip, come back through, and press the hip, and back to center. Plant the hand, we're gonna straighten the back leg, stepping into our down dog. So just to feel those shoulders, then we'll come back into our plank, step the other foot up, locking that front foot on, or sorry, that front hand on that foot, turn, come back to center, and turn to center, and turn back to center. We're going to lower the knee, we're going to press the hip, come back to center, press the hip to center, and one more time, hip and center. Plant the hand, straighten the leg, step her back into that down dog. Reaching those hips, we're just going to walk the heels slow. Nice and easy through that walk into the dog. And then we'll come back into our plank. Set that good plank up, good shoulders as we tiptoe those feet up. We're going to roll ourselves up, big tall stretch. Good, we'll reach it to one side. Reach it over to the other side. Oh, come back down with those hands. We are gonna get you guys ready to go, all right? Pause the video, guys, if you wanna do a little bit more gentle warm-up. Uh, I'm gonna move you into that first phase of work, which is gonna kickstart off with a plank uh, to down dog. But if you'd like to do some more gentle work with cat cows, thread the needles, a little more lower body stuff, please be my guest, uh, but I'm gonna get you guys going. So we start off our work set today with our plank to down dog. So I'm just gonna get set up in my plank. Hands are under my shoulders, my feet are together. And I'm going to tuck through the ribs and hips, press through the shoulders into my hollow. In this engagement, I'm going to pull back into my down dog, keeping my lats nice and focused.
focus on stabilizing through my shoulders. And then at the end, I'm gonna pull back into that position. So as I come back into my plank, I'm pulling my ribs and hips together, continuing to press through those shoulders the entire time so that I get that little protraction at the top. And I'm really focusing on this side body position, really working to hold that shoulder in place as I move from both positions from plank to that nice vertical position in my down dog. So take your time with that, ease in there, and you know, focus on those key points. Our next phase, we get set up in that good plank again, and if you need to, you can rest in between, or you can flow right into it, which is gonna be our plank in the nose. So I pull the ribs and hips, I press the shoulders up, and I'm gonna pull my knee to my nose, and then I'm gonna come back through. Pull my knee to my nose. And I'm trying to keep my hips level. I get a little bit rounded more in my upper back, but I don't want my hips to shoot up into a pike position as I do this. I want to try and bring my knee up, just keeping everything low, keeping everything tight, and just kind of working more compression through my abdominals and getting perhaps that little bit of cat back going on as I compress more and more. All right, so take your time, move slow through that, and hold for a little beat on both ends of the movement so that you're not rushing or using momentum. Our next exercise takes us down to the floor, which is going to be our heel glide to knee push-up. So I lay down on the floor, I'm going to get my hands nice and tucked beside my body, I'm going to get set here. So my hands are stacked under my elbows at my push-up position. I'm going to pull my shoulders forward like I'm trying to touch into the floor to give me that sense of where I don't want to be in my, my push-up. And then I'm going to pull them back, which is going to get me nice and set. And I'm going to pull my ribs and hips together, which locks everything in. And then I press. From here, I'm going to maintain the set shoulder position. And I'm going to lower down, keeping that nice tension all the way through. I relax again. I pull my shoulders forward. I pull them back. I pull my ribs and hips in. Maintain that shoulder position. And then lower down nice and smooth. So we want to make sure that we're keeping that shoulder down as I set this position back and down, this is where we want to stay the entire time. Sometimes as we press, the shoulder can creep up, or as we lower, sometimes the shoulder can creep up. So we really want to focus on that shoulder position as we set in the beginning of the drill. After that, we're going to move through five tempo push-ups again, just like we did last week. 303 tempo, but we're going to work on five reps this time. And you can take from the toes, from the knees, from the toe-knee combo, or from your ottoman, counter, whatever you've been using to do push-ups with at home, please continue. But what we're going to work on here, again, is showing you that good position, tension through the core, pressing through the shoulders. I lower for three, two, one, and then press one, two, three. If I don't have the knee, or sorry, the toe push, what I'm going to work on is maintaining that tension, three, two, one, maintain the tension, my knees come down, one, two, three, and if I don't have that lower, I'm going to set up on my plank, tension tight in the hollow, lower my knees down, and then lower forward and down in that good knee push-up, working on that tempo. So make the tempo your primary focus. I know some of you guys out there have toe push-ups and you want to do them, which is great, but I want you to make sure that if you're going to do the toe push-up, you can stay true to the tempo and the tempo up. So there's nothing wrong with lowering to the knees to assist in that tempo because that's going to help build more strength. So take that time, work on that, take it to the level of push-up that you can adhere to that lovely tempo. All right? After that, we're going to stand tall and give our arms a little bit of a break. I can get my feet nice and wide, my toes will be slightly turned out, and I'm going to work a side lunge for 30 seconds. So I'm going to take my hip down towards my heel. My knee is going to track my toe, and I'm going to try and keep my body as upright as I can. So I'm pulling back and down, staying as upright as I can, and then standing tall. So I'm going to turn profile so you guys can see that from the side. So I'm standing upright, my hip is going to go back and down towards my heel. Staying as upright as I can, as I can. My knee is still tracking my toe. And I think in my head, squat. So I'm thinking about squatting down to that heel as I stand up. Okay. 
So take your time with those. You can add them in for a little tempo, a little pause. They're just there to give those arms a little bit of recovery and start waking up the legs for more to come for down below. Quick recap, we have two to three routes. Three second plank into a, into a down dog for three to five reps. Plank knee to nose for 10 to 20 alternating reps, working on that good hollow and compression. Humeral glide to knee push up for three to five reps. Tempo push up for five at a 303 tempo. And then a side lunge for 30 seconds uh, for two to three rounds, working through that, warming up that upper body, and then shifting down to the bottom phase. So pause the video, take that down, have some fun with it. We are gonna start moving through some dumbbell work and some skill work and then get you to the workout. So the first thing that we start off with is our dumbbell or kettlebell swing. So I have a dumbbell here, and I'm gonna show you the couple of swings that we can use for the dumbbell. So first things first, like a kettlebell, I'm gonna hold the dumbbell by the belt, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm maintaining that good back position. So my feet are about a squat stance, and I'm going to pull my hips back, and I'm gonna keep my chest up, and my hands above my knees. And as I stand, I'm gonna use those legs and hips to get those arms moving. So we don't wanna use the arms to lift the kettlebell. They're just guiding the kettlebell and then guiding it back down. So I hold, I pull the hips back, and I just use those hips and legs to move those arms and generate that, in, that power to get that dumbbell moving. Very important, if I start overusing my arms, I'm gonna have a lazy or droopy belt. So that's another good indicator for you if you're using too much arm and not enough leg. Another option is to hold the dumbbell by the handle with both hands, kind of like a golf club. So same concept of the swing, all right? The hip and back position is the same. I keep it like that deadlift, hands above the knees, and I just use that nice leg drive to get that dumbbell moving. And I maintain that good back position like my deadlifts. Now, last but not least, I have a single arm swing, so I hold the dumbbell in one hand, and then I'm gonna use half reps and half reps. The swing itself is the same. The only difference with this one is, I may feel more comfortable to take it all the way overhead. And if I do, I can go there. So I'm gonna use this swing, the kettlebell swing action is the same, but I'm gonna use this to get comfortable with being overhead and exploring that overhead position. And then you can just switch, and work on that and swing with the other hand. So you can just do half reps, half reps. Key thing is the swing mechanics are all the same regardless of the uh, option that you choose and how you hold the kettlebell. All the same movement in terms of the mechanics to get the kettlebell or dumbbell moving. After that, we're gonna clean it up. So we clean the dumbbell up to the shoulder and I'm gonna keep it in my front rack. So my elbow's gonna be up slightly in that good front rack. Dumbbells can be resting on my shoulder. My feet are under my hips or slightly outside. Maybe a slight turn under the toe. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, squeeze my ribs, get set, and I'm gonna work a pause dip. I'm gonna take my hips down and my knees are gonna go slightly out. My body's gonna stay upright, shoulder over the hip, and my weight through the midfoot. And I'm gonna stand. And I'm gonna work that for three reps. I'm gonna do that for a three second hold to groove the dip. I'm gonna use push press. So the only difference in the dip with the push press and the pause dip drill is that I'm not pausing in the bottom. I'm using the momentum of that dip and drive to move that dumbbell overhead. So you can play around with that for three reps on one side, into your push press, set on the other side, three pause dips on the other side, into three push press, and it's going to give you the feel that you've done a few more push press but it's there to, to work on skill. So really focus in on that skill work. Our next exercise on the list is right out of the workout. It's our, it's our kind of flow uh, with our lunge and squat. So I'm gonna turn profile so you guys can see this. I'm gonna stand up nice and tall, and I'm gonna do one lunge, two lunge, squat stance, squat. And that's one rep. So my squat and lunge mechanics for any other type of movement are the same. As I step for my lunge, I wanna keep my knee stacked over top of my heel. I lower down, keeping that knee over top of the heel, the back knee, hip, shoulder, all in alignment, and I come back up. If you're more comfortable with the back lunge in terms of alignment, 
you can, you can do that too. You'll just step back and down, back and down, stepping into your squat stance, squat and fall. So back lunge, totally fine, whatever you want to use. These are unloaded, they're just meant to be really steady and flowy, all right? Squat mechanics are the same as any other squat. So we have our regular squat stance. I'm gonna try and pull my hips to my heels as I keep my body upright and my knees track the toes. So there's a little bit of pressure going out just so that my knees track those toes and I try and keep as upright as I can and stand. Feet are nice and flat, nice and solid, and I work that good balance. And so quick recap for you guys again, we have three rounds of that bottom piece, five to seven, uh, dumbbell or kettlebell swings, regardless of you know what kind of handle you're holding, we're just looking between three to or sorry five to seven. So if you're doing a single arm, just make sure you have the reps per side. In that, you're going to move into your dumbbell pause dip for three at three second hold, and then three push press repeat on the other side, taking down that lunge lunge squat just one time through that sequence and repeat three rounds. If you need a few more extra rounds of that. Please do so, take it down, warm yourself up, make sure you're ready to go for our workout that's about to come. So pause the video, take that down, come join me, we're gonna talk about the workout. The workout starts with 30 kettlebell swings or dumbbell swings, and any variation that you'd like to use, you can kind of play with in this work set. If you're doing the single arm, you can kind of alternate every five, you can do half on one side, half on the other, just make sure you're using both sides. After that though, we have our burpee. So our burpee, we have multiple options for this. I'm gonna show you those options now. So I'm gonna face sideways, I'm gonna get my hands down to the floor. I'm gonna jump my feet back, lower down, pop up. The other variation, I'm gonna lower down with a step into that good tripod, and I'm gonna step up. Or I could use any variation or hybrid of the step and the jump in that work set. The key thing is as we're lowering down, we're not doing a strict push-up, but we are hitting the bottom of a push-up. So we need to make sure that that wrist and elbow are nice and stacked and that we're coming slightly forward and down, staying nice and tight through the midsection like we do in our humeral glide and or tempo push-up drill. Our other options are a non-push-up variation, which are a squat thrust. So we have our jump back variation, we have our step back, jump in variation. We have our jump back, step in. Or we have our step back, step in. All of those are very similar in the sense they all have a solid plank in. So we hit that good plank, jump our feet or step our feet in, and maintain that strong hollow position and those strong legs when we jump or step into that plank. So make sure we're not hitting that sway back, all right? We wanna make sure we're tight, and then pop back in and finish the rep. Arms are straight, nice and strong, stacked under the shoulder the entire time, ready for that nice jump in. After the burpee, we go through our lunge lunge squat combo, forward or back. Again, if you'd like some kind of review on that, pull back to that opening warm up that we did, where we practice that, that sequence. The goal here is just to take it nice and steady, nice and smooth. You have 16 reps of that combo and, and you work through that nice and smooth. The V-up now, we have lots of options for the V-up. So first things first, we have our full double foot V-up. I stretch out nice and long, I'm gonna set up and up. Or if the two is not quite going down, you can do a single. You can also do a tuck. So I'm coming up with my legs and my arms, or my upper body, sorry. And I have a single leg tuck, all right? Upper body meeting the leg in the middle, or if that's too much hinging, I can work on my hollow up. So I squeeze into my hollow and then lower down. I can do a single variation back and forth. Well, we have two other options for you that allow us to focus primarily on the upper portion of our body. One of which is a fan favorite. We come up with our legs, so they're in that L position, toes together. I'm gonna reach my arms, my shoulders and head are on the floor, and now I'm gonna pull my ribs and hips together, trying to reach my shoelaces or my toes. So I squeeze, and I lower with control. 
So this is not the fastest variation of the up, but it's a nice option to really work that core out and work on that upper portion of our abdominals and that V up option. Another option which gives you a nice hamstring stretch as well is our pike sit up. So we get our arms above, legs are straight, I sit up with a little bit of momentum and then I come back, touch, sit up, and I reach through that whole range of motion. Remembering that I'm trying to build my range of motion as the workout continues. So I'm listening to my body. I don't want my hamstrings to go Pah. All right. If I can only get to my knees for the first couple reps, that's fine. But you may find you can get a little further as the workout progresses and those hamstrings um, warm up. Our last exercise is our push press. You will do all 30 reps on one side, and then you'll do 30 reps on the other side, working through that good dip drive and that good overhead position. We have one round of that piece of work right there. 30 kettlebell swings or dumbbell swings, 30 burpees, 16 reps of our lunge, lunge, squat combination or flow, V up for 30, one of those variations, and then push press 30 per side. It's a nice chipper, good numbers to play around with. Break them down if you need to, right? So I don't expect it to be unbroken. Maybe a couple things might go unbroken, but break them down, rest as you need to, keep those movements clean. We want to start the week off well. So have fun with this old chipper, you guys. We're gonna have some fun this week building into our Remembrance Day workout and our weekend of hero workouts for our 24 hour fundraiser. So it's gonna be a good time. Be prepared for a fun little week. Work for quality, you guys, have fun. And we'll talk to you very soon. Bye, you guys.